God, it's Friday. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies of your view with me. Hi, Mariam. Hello, Mariah. Hello. I love the House of BC. Yes, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. another House of BC <laughs> outfit. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. So remember, yes, ML101 yeah. for a discount code <laughs> at House of BC. I yeah, I'm fine. So yesterday, um, I got... Uh, nominated and I, uh, I was named one of the brand ambassadors for the campaign for the Nigerian Conservation Foundation yes. campaign on saving vultures. Right. So of course I have spoken here a few times about why it's important to save vultures. We know every time we hear about vultures it's either you think they are evil birds or they are dirty birds but they actually help protect our environment from all forms of diseases. So please when you see a vulture don't kill it. Save Where it. would I see a vulture? <laughs> not in Lagos, but other people are watching boys, around. Yeah, but the thing you may not see one, yeah. but if you hear of anyone who has seen one and thought to kill, you can tell this the person. So Please, <laughs> <laughs> I was not looking for vulture, but it's just it's, it, it suits your personality, you know, to be worried about vultures, monkeys, and yeah, goats around. Interest, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah. Your interest, your interest. Oh yeah, that that brings me monkey. My, yesterday morning, my husband said they found two very fresh monkeys in my house. You know, I told you that the new oh. house is bordering like a valley. Yes, and oh the like he said they were so clean, they were eating well. They they came to the compound, um, really nice looking monkeys. And I said, really, most of Magodo were habitats of monkeys because mm. they, they, they were largely bush. Mm. And those bushes harbored a lot of monkeys. Mm. But we have encroached so much into their space, we've driven them into the valley. And now people are even buying into the valley too. But wow. what we should realize, like what Mayam mm. is, supposed, is always going to be saying and what she's always said is that we need to pres preserve our environment. Yeah. The okay. more we care for our environment, the more our environment will care for us. So, yeah. right. so I'm right. representing Nima. Maybe if Nima comes in early, I would zoom out so Nima can zoom in. She's stuck you in know, traffic. She's stuck in traffic mm. and I happen to be around. So. Yeah, because yeah, it's even in the papers, her neighborhood, that's yeah, her, that's it's uh, Papa Uchidi, is horrible. Down. And if the, according to the paper, well, we'll get to that in, in yeah. a moment. But um, yeah. Because it affected me yesterday. It took me four hours to get from Catterbridge to my house yesterday. Oh, sugar, oh. I have um, birthday shout outs. Oh, <laughs> goodness me. Yes. I, got a, I got a shout out. I mean, this person really, really asked me to. Um, her birth, he said her elder sister's name is Olorunwa Arub, Arubino Omoje. That's um, Olorunwa, Olorunwa Arubino. It's her elder sister. Today's her birthday, December 4th. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Yay, I remember it. I'm so There's excited. One yeah, it's one more, right? Yeah. I'm sure there <laughs> there is there is one more. Chief, you said you were going to get Chief again. I did do it. Oh, yeah, this <laughs> Chief Samuel Adedo his birthday. Woo -woo, yeah. Yeah. Chairman, happy birthday. <laughs> well, I'm terrible like that. And there's one more person. It was supposed to be yesterday. Well, you missed it. I missed it. So he said that, please, I would like you to give a shout out to my grandma in Zaria. Yesterday, oh, 3rd of December, wow. was her birthday. Oh. She's a huge fan of the show. Her name is Hajia Fatima Suleiman. Happy, Ooh, happy birthday, Hajia. And, yeah. and it's from her grandchildren, Nazif, Sadiq, Azila, Sultan, Sabira, Sonia, Mubarak, and Amal. Yeah, so you did a good job. Grandma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> happy oh birthday, God. grandma. And yes, I'm, I mean, so happy birthday to all our fans. You know, it's important for us to recognize our fans. So it's just mm. when they send us messages i mean mm. I, I i try not to read my messages because sometimes they greet you too much and, they, and, they, and i try just it's, it's not only too much greeting i have mm. issues with it is the soliciting for help oh that's when I normal can't i get so that much mm. no no it, it puts a little it's it's heavy yeah they are, and there are like many of them i really would want to help and then there's the, a list of all their genuine some genuine of course, course. some are commercial genuine yeah, yeah, needs genuine. that i can't Step up to help and meet. Many so, are so genuine. You yeah. get that a lot. So, mm. but uh, when I when I see this, like, these good ones, I try to say that. Celebrate them. Okay, that's all we can take on that. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're going to start with the Nigerian Tribune. Police ask court to stop judicial panels of inquiry. IGP directs investigation into suit. Queries force legal officer. My wife was God's special gift to me. That's Professor Yediro at the funeral of um, late his wife. Um, APC leaders approach court to stop neck meeting schedule for December 8th. Lagos pays 60 million naira compensation to families of slain office, police officers. How money transfer operators sabotage Naira? An aftermath of November 27th anniversary chaos, Tinumbu Akonde meet Arigbe Shola and Oyetola. Okay, which story are we going to start with? Um, 
I was going to start with the CBN. Oh, which one? Okay. Um, the CBN. So, according to the CBN, um, there's estimated $2 billion monthly from the, from the diaspora remittances. Mm -hmm. And um, according to them, the reason why they have put out the new policy on the international uh, monetary transfer for operators is because, according to them, uh, many operators have been shortchanging recipients by delivering in local currency and using the hard currency to attack the Naira. So they're saying that things are starting, to, starting today, they're allowing for people to actually get the remittances in the currency in which it was sent. Mm. And hopefully, according to them, that should strengthen our Naira. As high as $24 billion. Annually. Estimated $2, $2 billion monthly. For, for and according to like, that kind of money getting into our economy, it will definitely yeah, help no. us in stabilizing so a lot of things. So the police is asking the court to stop um, the judicial panels that have been, panels of inquiry that have been set up by governors, you know, after the violence that threw the NSAS um, um, movement. And they're saying that these panels are not... Constitutionally, they are null and void, and have no and have, have no and of no effect, you know, of any effect. And so they are asking that the court should stop that. And but honest, yeah, okay, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, but um, okay. Do you want the general of police was not going to say was saying, not saying that he was not wondering who gave the order because according to him that was, was, this constitutional right for them to actually inquire into the police. So he's saying that the IGB says who gave the order on the heels of trending reports on social media. Mm. He's going to investigate the first legal officer to query him on why they did go approach the courts to actually stop the judicial inquiry. How do you set go all the state? way to the courts without the IGB being you know, uh, hey, uh, informed that, about that's civil service for you? But I just wanted to add because the um, governor of Lagos State has also, I mean, that's the picture story there. Mm. So families of um, those who um, their police officers were, um, lives were cut short during this NSAS violence have been given a total of 60 million naira, um, 1 million for, I think it's 10 families. There were, I think 10 well, families, okay. yes. The nation had six families. Okay, okay. 10 million okay so 10 million for six families, yes. actually. And the um, uh, state government is also saying that they'll make sure that their children get scholarships right. for education and says that security remains top priority in Lagos State. And um, they'll do everything possible to make sure that uh, we're secure and okay. are able to run our businesses. Okay, so that was three. The nation now, government to elders, Buhari won't quit over Boko uh, Bono killings. Oh. Hashtag answers IGP disowns suit to stop probe of officers. Attorney General Federation says um, CCB should allow access to public officers' assets. May not extradited to face trial coming in from Niger. Okay, so um, I think according to the Minister of Culture and Tourism, Mr. Lai Mohamed, he's saying that the, um, the call for the president to resign over the killing of uh, farmers in Brno is, um, is wrong, and uh, he was elected four term, and he's been re-elected again back in 2019, and um, he's going to lose his entire tenure. It's wrong for Nigerians to call for the sack or for the resignation of the presidency over the killings that there's no country that's immune to the insurgency going on around the, around the world, and the fact that these are soft targets across mm. the country, and no, no country can really, really um, stop these Boko Haram from, 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 from these kind of acts. But they're going to continue to strengthen the military to ensure that more lives are protected. Yeah, so this was just a response to the Northern Elders Forum who had asked that if the president finds it too hard to contain, maybe he should resign. resign. Okay, moving on to Vanguard. Anxiety in the door as gunmen block road abduct scores. Mm. Or should the Ababa Expressway in lockdown? Despite bad eggs, judiciary is still common man's uh, last hope, says Justice Mbosu Eheme. Hashtag answers, how hoodlums vandalize looted my business. 2023, South should produce next president, says Shikarao. And use of mercenaries, federal government's decision, says defense headquarters. Which story are we taking? So I'll take it, Edo State. Um, mm. There's yesterday um, a group of kidnappers. Um, blocked the road, the Bini Ekoma Aochi Road, and um, took many passengers. I think some newspapers have it, over 20 um, uh, passengers were taken into the bushes. But um, Vanguard, which I got, didn't specifically put down mm. any number. Mm. So they took a team, they divided themselves into, team, into teams. They stopped this bus, took the passengers out into the bush, and then asked the driver to use his bus to block the road. A trailer coming... 
and saw the block road, suspected, of course, that something was amiss and ran into the bus. Mm. Two people were reported to have been killed from that. And um, the police says that they are aware of this, uh, of this particular kidnapping and that that particular road actually is like a hotspot for things like that. And you can imagine people's fears who are traveling during this period and to hear... Okay. Like this. I hope that it's and one vigilante was also killed yes, in that whole thing. Vigilante was okay, one story to talk about. The family. Yes, I want to make this out that um, the former governor, two time governor of Kano State, Ibrahim, Senator Ibrahim Shikarawa, said that Nigeria's next president should come from the South South. And he was speaking on um, Sunrise Daily. He mentioned the fact that the constitution of the country might not say specifically, but for the sake of, he said, um, that there, there has to be some sense of belonging and what I'll call constitution of common sense. Hmm. That so it is right, it, the, even if the party does not zone to the south or any constitution doesn't zone to the south, the, the constitution of common sense should make um, the, gov the next president of Nigeria come from hmm. the south-south part of Nigeria. And okay, many I, people support that statement, according I'll, to the papers. I'll, I have to take the Lagos, uh, the Apapa Ocean, the expressway, because, I mean, the picture, I wish you could still have seen see the picture story. Um, it says that this blockage is caused by the articulated truck and tanker drivers have taken over the entire dual carriageway of the expressway, whether heading to Apapa or returning from Apala. So both carriages have been blocked. Mm -hmm. And they're saying um, the, the governor, the federal government, the private sector, those who have so committed to support this, what, what have you done? Where are you? Have you abandoned the, this entire road? And that's the question yeah. that Vanguard yes. and a lot is of people, asking and here. A lot of the commuters have said those who are supposed to manage traffic in those areas seem to have abandoned their posts yes. as well. So yeah. you would not see last man or the others. So, we, so um, beyond that, though, we, we, we've placed lots of lip service. We have a presidential task force on that road. And the last time my parents came to visit me, they got back home at 2 a.m. 2 a. This, this has affected many livelihoods, and we can't just, we, we just make it look like it's that area. The government mm. needs to step, step in on a greater, on a more significant role because the owners of the truck need to be penalized. Mariah said it last time, we've been saying it over and over again, unless you penalize owners, so people pack their trucks on the road, blocking the entire way in and out of it, an area. It's, it's, it's extreme height of lawlessness, mm. and then we let them go. We don't find them, we just permit them to do this. Okay, moving on to Daily Sun. I mean, Nima is stuck in traffic, yeah. and it was as a result of this thing. So we, 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 every single day we talk about the same traffic. <laughs> Daily Sun, we have no powers to hire foreign soldiers against Boko Haram's defense headquarters. Army holds, no tr holds training on spiritual warfare. I'd like to take that three. Nice. Interpol <laughs> brings back Flame Mena from um, Niger Republic. Um, tension in Lagos, Emo, Bayelsa, Crossover as APC PDB fights for seats tomorrow. And Ohanese, my distractors are pharaohs who don't know Joseph. Says Obiazo. Who's sorry, take it. So the defense, the yes. defense headquarters yesterday say that um, they have no powers they, um, to to involve mercenaries in this war against insurgency. It is above their level. So mm. this is something that has to be asked for at the federal government. The people of Nigeria have to ask for it. It's not the military's mm. um, power to ask for it. And they also ask if they are overstretched. And says, well, as a military officer, you don't say you're overstretched. That, or you, and you don't say you are under stretch. You just do your, you show up and you do your job. And also the, um, uh, I think it's spokesperson uh, for was that Buru? Yeah, Buru Tai was, was, yes, yes. was talking also about the spiritual warfare, which made the headline may sound funny, but if you read it, he's just talking about that most of these wars that were fighting, especially against Boko Haram and Iswap, it's, an, it's an ideological exactly. warfare. Mm. So they're teaching people that. Um, mm. Let me like, take that. Let okay. me take that story because that, that was that was a very important point. Yes. When you see spiritual warfare, I just don't mm -hmm. you understand. But what was really saying was that Boko Haram's ideology is based on. Um, ideology against Western education. Yes. ISWAP is against the legitimacy of the de democratically elected government. Yeah. So those are the two ideologies. So he's saying that clerics mm -hmm. must get involved yeah. to create a whole new ideology yeah. for these people. So that they, because that's the tool they used to manipulate people and get them into Boko Haram. Yeah. So that's what he means by spiritual warfare. Yeah. Well, I've been saying that since, and, and really our newspapers need to stop manipulating stories because mm. some people just newspaper headlines, read the headlines, and then come to conclusion. If it's, yes. if, if yeah. you had yes. said yes. let your headline portray yes. exactly. the story. That's exactly. why I'm happy we read this properly. <laughs> That's all we can take on front page review. So, we're going to go on a break. It's Friday. We have two very important guests today. You don't want to miss this show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So, sometimes it's heartbreaking that our culture is gradually going into extinction. 
greeting culture, kneeling down, prostrating, prostrating for elders, even our dress sense is now taking over. Now, joining us on the show is an important personality. His Imperial Majesty, Oba Dr. Frederick Enitolonda Obateru Akinruto, the paramount ruler and prescribed authority, Ulubu of Uboland, Elijah Undo State, and the, Niger and the chairman of Ondo State Council of Others. Welcome, sir. Kabisi, welcome well. to the show. Good to have you on the show, sir. Thank you. Um, so, we will definitely be talking today more about culture. And um, growing up as young children, we used to revere the office of the KBC. It was such a, it was an office that comes with a lot of sacredness. Um, um, and there was that fear that ah, you can't go to KBC, that you can't say that in front of KBC. Today, all that seems to have been somewhat demystified. <clears throat> and and we, we wonder, where is the role of that cultural sacredness today? Has it been totally um, rubbed off by, by civilization? Or do, would you say that if there's still that essence in the role of the KBC? Uh, I want to thank you sincerely for this a very brilliant question. What you said now about the Oba, you say a system up to tomorrow. But the problem we had now was that uh, the, some of the people that uh, calling themselves the Oba, they don't have the blue blood. Mm. Mm. Come and see, the blue blood is not there. Otherwise, the dignity, the respect, the culture is still existing up to tomorrow. For instance, in my domain, before you can see me, you need to pass through some chief. They have to, you know, look at you, do some ritual thing to you before you come to me. Okay. And uh, how to greet Oba, you know, not everybody knows how to greet Oba. Mm -hmm. You can't greet Oba like a new normal person. Kabiesio, 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 Kado Kwelukibato, Kwelese. You have to come with something. If it is cola, not cola, mm. or bitter cola. You have to put it somewhere before you come out to come and say, in our play, they said, when you are coming to Kutoba, you have to come with, a, what they call it a tea, something that has to back it. Mm. That's cola, some sort of, you know, uh, things like money, like everything, mm. you know, in the Yoruba, they say something, mm. and when you have to put down you don't know how to carry it if you are going. It's a system. Mm. And uh, the moment people know that, they get wind of it that uh, this thing is a system, you'll be given respect. Some of, uh, some of the other, who is not half a, what they call it, the blue blood, they go, you know, other doesn't visit people. Some people, the other will carry their work and see their, you know, staff to some other, after, you know, past 90 house, go and give them cheap tenancy. It's wrong. Mm. That's why some of the people are looking down on mm. some of the others. See, because it's not it's about done mm. those days. Whether you are a billionaire, you are whatever you call yourself, you have to go to Oba House. If you want to Oba will look at you, whether you, are, you, you, you have that, that integrity to give mm. you chintensi. Mm. Before they give you, not that somebody because you have money. Some people may have money, they don't have that integrity to right. have that chintensi. That mm. was the thing that happened this day. <coughs> We have to talk to ourselves. Mm. The respect is still there. Mm. The dignity is still there. The culture is still there for the others. Some people are of the opinion that mm. the reason it might have been a bit um, the culture, because generally the culture is wearing, we're not, we're not extolling the culture the yes. way we should. Yes. And that might also be what is rubbing off on the others. That's one. But um, another perspective is that we don't have a constitutional rule for the others. Others are appointed and the appointment is supported by the governor they earn from the govern the governor the government in power in the state so why then let's just face the governor then rather than face the obas what's your say on constitutionalizing a rule for the obas knowing they are the closest to the citizenry uh, now what you just asked me now you are correct the very important you know, question 
a lot of people now, I told you about blue blood. Mm. If you don't have blue blood in that house, this is how you cook money that we use on very well. Mm. What happened now? When you have money in some community, they give you symptoms, they mm. give you a basket. Mm. By the time you arrive there, you don't want to do. Mm. Because you are not brought up from that uh, family of the Obashi. You will you know, do a lot of things. People will be asking, is there this Oba is a real Oba? What is he doing? Does he have the culture of the Oba? Mm. Are you getting my point? Because there's no blood blood. You have to be, you know, if you are from the royal home, you have to be groomed from age one, two, three, four, until you are about 40. Mm. But if you are not from there, you just came from nowhere. It will affect it. It will affect that truth. Two, your question. The constitutional rule. We have been clamoring for it for almost 10 years now. Mm. That uh, we have to hide our rule in government. Mm. The state government, even from the local government, state government, and the federal, federal government. So, for instance, look at what happened for this as I'm coming. I just want to mm. tell you something. Because the people don't know they are rude, that's why they, they don't know they are rude, they will keep to the problems. Mm -hmm. They are afraid for, God, for them not to offend, offend the, the government or the governor. I do believe they have constitutional rule. They know what to do. They don't have to arrest the problem. Although some of us know our, our rule. For me, in my domain, I get rid of it that the rulers are coming to me at the end mm. What I did was I tell you, we need to advise some of the monarchs to be very close to the youth. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very close to my youth. The male and female, the ballet and the chief, at least quarterly meeting with them. Mm. I hope I'm. Yes, yeah, yeah. Right, right. So, Oba, um, yeah. you know, sometimes you, you started off by saying mm. that people don't even know how to greet yes. the Oba. And um, I have to, I'm, I'm guilty. I mean, when I saw you today, I almost fell flat on my face. But yeah. I didn't know the words to say to you. But, yeah. you know, looking at you, I knew that this was someone to be revered. Yeah. What do you think, you know, the Council of Oba should do concerning educating? Because not everyone has access mm -hmm. to learning this thing. I mean, like maybe pay, make it part of the school curriculum. Mm -hmm. Teach us how to understand culture, respect culture, and revere our uh, elders and our others when we see them. Yeah, that, that's what I'm trying to explain. Now. Mm. First and foremost, before your subject can respect you, because if your subject is not respect you, there's no how the outside world yes. can respect you. Number one thing you're supposed to do is to have political meeting, like quarterly meeting. With your youth, with your ballet, with your chief, you have to embrace them. When you embrace them, they are the ones that are going to propagate you. They are going to, it's going to popularize, I mean, publicize your name, that you have a very good job. Mm -hmm. We're polished, we're educated, he, he, he likes us, and we like him. That is the That's number one. Number two, you should not see yourself as a lord of the Lord. Mm. to your subjects. <clears throat> you have to be very close to them. They have to be very close to you. And I'm trying to explain something to you. I know maybe, I don't know. For what happened in my domain during the time of this uh, NSAS, mm. because of my closeness with my subject and the youth, what they did to me, and I've won the M in the night, they come to me. And there was a problem somewhere in Octavia. They have burning houses, they have burning cars, they don't, they do that. So I said, wow, what is this? They said, that's why we come to you. There were about uh, 20 of them. They said they were, the, you know, they were in some place for about 30 kilometers to me. I said, what do you want me to do? They said, I come and see you, you have to see us now. Hmm. You know, for, for anything you tell us, we will do it, we will obey you. Hmm. I said, okay. Uh, I want you to go and convert. go and hold your meeting and come back. They came back to me and they said, Ah, come you know what you want now. <laughs> you got it done. Before they said that, I understood what they said, what they meant. Mm. I said, Okay, I just entered my room. I came out. Mm. I didn't come out with a knife or anything. I went <laughs> to my room. I came out to them, take, take. 
go and give it to them. That is, I bought rice, I bought you know, uh, cow, mm. give them money. I don't want any size in my domain right. in the Niger. You know, they went back. Like, the Kabi said he doesn't want two people. You know, it's our father. You were amongst mm -hmm. the Kabiyasis that saw the president recently. Mm -hmm. You saw him. Mm -hmm. um, I would like you to share your experience at that meeting with Nigerians because many Nigerians feel totally disconnected with our president, especially for the three farmers who were recently beheaded. And we've not heard him speak to us mm -hmm. about it, the president. He has not spoken to Nigerians about it. We feel he's totally not. We, 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 there's a sense of disin disinterest from coming from his, his own side. Since you've met with him, what is the posture of the president? What exactly are his plans? What, how does he plan to engage you? What did he say? Let us know. That maybe you can speak to us to understand the thinking of our president at this time. Yes. Very good question. The president has spoke to us. You know, when the NSAS started, mm. before they will look at Jacket mm. and the war people, Governor have been talking, Mr. Nature have been talking, Bailey have been talking, Chief have been talking, Cabez have been talking. The day President came out that that this thing was end. Mm. We don't want it to happen again. That was the day they stopped it. The day announced, and the, the following day, that was the end of SAS, where they don't burn houses, they don't do anything. I'm just trying to remind you, man. Mm. Now, after that, we went to Abuja to meet, we met with him. What we heard from him is very encouraging. And he told us that, well, whatever the youth asked, requesting for a state, he's trying to give it to them. That's what he said. He said he's going to give it to them. And they, they, were, they were planning it now. It's part of what we came for. That was about two weeks in Lagos State here with some governors, some assistants of the urban from the from the southwest here, yeah, myself as a mother advice. The governor is, I mean, the president is doing a lot of things now because we had a meeting twice with him. And he promised that he's going to satisfy Nigeria, the youth. And he said, good, and he will do it. Ah, okay, so. Yes. <laughs> we're going to keep for that. Yeah. <laughs> because. We don't feel it. It's only you, he told us. He hasn't told yeah, us. We're going to break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thanks. We still have KBSC here with us. Um, so let me, sir. Culture. Let's go into culture. We've been talking about insecurity for a while. I mean, before well, the show, before the break, actually, we're talking about our, our president's speech. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Let me let you go. Okay. Um, I just wanted to go to insecurity as well. And for me, is um, a lot of the times when we hear the military talk about what is happening, they say that it has to do with grassroots intelligence. Um, they have to do it at the grassroots level to fight this war. And I'm wondering what you think about that. Is it really a problem from the grassroots, or could it just be that someone is trying to pass the buck? Now, the, the surgency in Nigeria is not like the regular war. It's what you call a guerrilla war. It's like guerrilla war because the, 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 the human beings you are fighting with, you didn't see them physically. Yeah. And in any guerrilla war like that, it, it takes time. If it is a regular war, you could fight it within two, three years, finish. But any other war like that, a guerrilla, a regular war, if it is guerrilla war, it can be on, on and on for 30 years. If you don't manage it, that was exactly what has happened in Nigeria. The grassroots, the really tried. If you look at what happened in a well known of recent killings of people, they've been killing them like that. They are trying to help the military. Well, I want to tell you now that they are civilian, they didn't have weapons, mm. unlike the military. They have to suffer for it. That was what is happening. For me, I think uh, the soldier really tried. Because it's not, when you carry a gun in a normal way, 
You can talk, you can be laughing with it. But in a war, in a regular war, for you to shoot a gun, you will be very careful because your enemy could get you before you shot at them. So that was exactly what happened. So, by Allah, I think what you could do is for everybody to come together. Hmm. Sir, Kabesi. Yes. Nigerians are not happy that there are constant meetings. You just see all the obas, mm. all the governors, mm. chief of Kinikon, all of them sit yeah, down, discuss, yeah. to discuss it's something they've discussed before and repeating to themselves what they've already discussed before. Mm. And it's as if we're not really going forward, sir. We are worried that we're not seeing activity. Nigerians had initially called for the sack of the service chiefs. Mm. They even asked for the resignation of the presidency. Mm -hmm. The minister of culture was saying mm. that, why would you say that? That this is, you know, that it is wrong for you to ask for that kind of request. Nigerians want to see that something is being done. Because you cannot keep winning the battle using the same strategic um, um, techniques. You need mm. something new. So mm. you speak to the, the president, you speak to all the service. You, mm. do, you, do, you, do you have that confidence? That they are actually working in our interest. Especially that's really that's the question. Yes. Based on what happened in within in those states where yes. our, our Anoba got yes. killed, you would, yes. it, it would even it, it, would, it, it makes it makes it it makes uh, I feel like it should bring it more to your your doorstep that mm -hmm. if Anoba within my states could mm -hmm. get killed, that means mm -hmm. the state of insecurity has really increased. Okay, uh, it's most unfortunate. Only four that they, they occur in you know, the is very, very brilliant over because I'm the chairman of the Council of Oba. We felt bad, honestly. But uh, uh, nobody could blame even the governor of the state or Oba because uh, such a thing comes once in a while. Hmm. We didn't like it. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes it at all. But uh, what we are trying to do now is to buckle up again. To make sure that uh, what we are doing about security is not enough. Mm. The Obas, the government of Ondo State, government of Nigeria, we have to buckle up and make sure that we change our rotation the way we faced it before. We have to be very, what would you very fast. Yeah, the buckle up is I tell you, what I'm trying to what I meant by say buckle up is very simple. They have to look for security for each one of the Obas. I give them security. Mm. Maybe police, uh, you know, civil defense, whatever, whatever they can give us to support us. Mm. That was exactly what Yes, I'm a techno. Yes, yes. What's I'm a techno doing in your region? Yeah, I'm a techno. They are doing very well. Okay. Anywhere the police cannot step into. I'm a techno will go there and freeze them out. Mm. Okay. That was exactly what happened. You have to be collaboration, you have to come together. And protect our interests. Nobody's island of knowledge, nobody's island of security. We have to come together. When we mm. come together, we we'll mm. freeze them up. Mm. Yes, Are there good. any landmark projects that you have carried out in your term as OBA that you would like to share with people, or any major project that you feel that people need to embrace and replicate? Yeah, let me talk about my local government, my Domi Ubu. As soon as I ascended the, the, the truth of my father, what I did is to group everybody together, I invite you, the elders, and the everybody. Mm -hmm. First of all, what I did was a scholarship to everybody, mm -hmm. the youth who cannot uh, pay it's their school fees, I give them scholarship. You know, in our place, we don't have anything that fishery. Mm -hmm. I bought nets for a lot of people. Can know for them to go to Atlantic Oceans. Yeah. Uh, some of the people who I look at that want to go for the MSc, mm -hmm. I help them in university. Even doctorate, mm -hmm. I help them. Because if you don't develop your youth, there's mm -hmm. no how you go. You can mm -hmm. move on in your community. That's mm -hmm. what I did, first mm -hmm. and foremost. And I've sold this to everybody in the state that a place who every other must look after your youth, follow that line, follow yeah. that line. Yeah. and it's working, they were doing it now, and this is, even the government of industry, that's what they are doing. Okay, yes. we'll have to wrap up with you, sir. Yes. Is there any other <laughs> message you'd like to give to Nigerians that are watching you this morning, especially concerning insecurity? Um, my message is very simple, particularly for the monarch. You know, you know what happened in the state is that uh, he, he affected everyone for the other, even for two days. 
Even though that I can't move, I can't move to anywhere. I was shocked. Mm. Mm. Because the advisor is an important advisor to me. Mm. Very brilliant, very articulate, mm. well dressed. And then when he spoke, you will like him. Mm. So that's what I miss about him. Mm. Mm. My advice to everybody, not even in this state, they have to look for security for us. Mm. Security for the others. Security for the others. We right. need securities. Because and those ones who don't have blue blood, should they step, step down? No, they don't. That's what I wanted them to step down now. Okay. okay, they should step down. They have to step down because okay. if you don't have blue blood, that's why you see somebody I'm vivid going mm. to people have going to some chief to give their chief mm. It's wrong. I mean, it, it, it waters down the Yeah, it waters down the There were constructions say, you know, uh, mm. which we inherited from our father. Mm. You can't go to anybody. Say, any, whether you have money, you don't have money in the, in the town. You are, you are the subject of the Oba. Mm. You are you're responsible. You, you, for anything you, you have, you have to give it to the Oba. You bow. Mm. But by the time Oba comes to your house, to you come and beg for money, beg it's for this. Yeah. There's no integrity again. Yes. My advice is for them to stay in there. They are doing yeah. Let the people that are rich to come and take safe attention. Safe attention with them. Right. From there, sorry. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. It was a pleasure having you, sir. Thank you educated you us a bit more. Yes. That's all we can take on this segment. When we come back, we have another very distinguished guest. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for joining us. So we have with us an elder statesman, the former governor of Kano State, and now a senator, Malam Ibrahim Shekarao. He'll be discussing the situation of insecurity in Nigeria, the call for sacking of the service chiefs, and other related topics. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How Welcome are you? to the show. It's quite a pleasure being here. You've been around recently in media houses, and we've been hearing you talk about <laughs> this issue of insecurity, and we're quite interested in your perspective because um, recently Nigerians yeah. cried out after yeah. the slaughtering of 43 farmers in the yeah. north. Yeah. And many Nigerians had said they have to they had to sack the service chiefs or the yeah. president, yeah. and the president himself had to resign. That is a show of demonstration that yeah. something is changing. Absolutely. In your view. Yeah. Um, how, how symbolic would these acts have been in showing Nigerians that something is being done to counter insurgency in this country? Well, I think, thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. As you rightly said, I have been here for the next, uh, last couple of days attending the National Council on Establishment Meeting. In my capacity as chairman of the Senate Committee in charge of establishment and public service. And I just felt I should take the opportunity to share some of these views. Uh, the issue of insecurity is nothing new on the table. It's nothing new on the streets of Nigeria. And uh, we, many very uh, well-meaning Nigerians have been making uh, a lot of uh, noise about it. And uh, it's no longer a secret that there are a lot of things that need to be done. Uh, of course, there has been a calls upon call for the last uh, two or three years that it's high time uh, we review what is commonly called the security architecture in Nigeria. Mm. Uh, you see, people b believe and it's common knowledge that if you keep doing the same thing and you're expecting different results, you're being crazy. Uh, we need to revisit the strategies. Uh, it is no longer a secret that there is no proper synergy between the security agencies. And we appreciate the fact that they also have their own shortcomings. The mm. number is there. They are not sufficient. Uh, the equipping is still uh, not above mm. average. The training is not there. The facilities. Not too long ago, I think either your station or your sister station exposed the training institutions of the police. It's so mm. pathetic. Mm. I mean, you, you can't even train uh, madmen there. Mm. It's, 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 it's terrible. So a lot of these things are getting us uh, a lot of concern. Right. And then more seriously when lives have been lost. Uh, you see, what else? If you are borrowing money to construct roads, electricity, schools, but for who? For the dead? Yeah. For the dead? 
I mean, okay. yes, let's, let's, let's cure the life. So actually, that's why the concern is there. And uh, there's no way you can exonerate the leadership from all of this, mm -hmm. starting from the president and the mm -hmm. service chief. So mm -hmm. people are saying, let's get a change. And the, the thing that I have brought onto the table now is it's not even the question of whether these service chiefs are performing or not performing. That's another ball game. Mm -hmm. The fact is they have illegally overstayed. Mm. Yes, mm. The, 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 the law, there is a common public service scheme of service across the Federation. If you are a public officer on the payroll of government is 35 years mm -hmm. of service mm -hmm. or 60 years of age, the moment you hit any of this, you go. Uh, so is the president saying he doesn't know this? Are the advisors saying they, they don't know this? Is mm. the management and service boards right. of the military. Not okay, let me side. get a few more questions. Yeah. Right, so we've seen the North divided across um, views on this insecurity and recent killing of the farmers. Yeah. Some people are on it. The Northern Elders Forum, are, you know, some are on the side of the salt and seeing you know, insecurity in the North is too much. Mm. And some are saying, and the, some are calling outrightly for the president to resign. Exactly. While some are, you know, saying, no, we shouldn't blame the president or ask for his head for this. We should you know, look at the governors and whether they have proper welfare for their people enough to stop them from trying to join bandits or, you know, the insurgents. What exactly would you, where is your stand? What, what, is, what do you want well, from you the see, president? My, my, my stand is that, you see, I quite agree, having been in office before, uh, the issue of uh, people's welfare, the issue of security and so on is a collective responsibility, if you like. If you are looking at it globally, it's even every person's responsibility. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to specifics, uh, government has a duty. It has been mentioned uh, time and again that the number one primary duty of any government as per our constitution is to protect lives and properties. If you can't give this, then there is no government. The number one good governance is to, for you at least to survive. If, if you can't survive, then uh, what services? If you do all of these social services, for who? Uh, if you have the fear of leaving your house to go onto the street, mm -hmm. it's no longer even kidnapping on the street. They go in, knock at your door and carry you along. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's oh. a, so pathetic. So I think there is no way we can remove the head from it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the security agencies, 100%, are responsibilities of the federal government. Right. Yeah. The so, state government don't want the police, we don't want the SSS, the civil defense, and so on. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, sir, a lot of people would say that, um, mm. apart from a few spokespersons yeah. in the north, yeah. you don't see the sort of anger you'd expect from Northerners, you don't see the youths on the streets, you don't see them screaming, you know, and asking for change concerning insurgency and insecurity in that area. But instead, it seems like even the use of the local police is more to attack, you know, like moral, so, you know, like moral um, behavior or misbehavior <laughs> instead of what is constantly putting people, uh, making them displaced, people being murdered, children being orphaned. Where is the voice that people need to hear from the North? Well, I think uh, I wouldn't say that people are not talking. If you are talking of seeing people on the street and so on, that is some of the uh, moral issue. You know, from the uh, spiritual point of view, of course, Islam and Christianity also believe that you need to exercise some patience. We believe all of this is coming from God. But there is a point. Now that we've gotten to that point, people are not talking. You can imagine the elders forum. Uh, in, in, in the north, mm. uh, going it to the final uh, point of saying, let the president go. Mm. He's one of us and uh, he's part of the north. And uh, it's not because uh, people don't want to talk, we don't want to go into the streets to fight, to uh, demonstrate. It's just one out of all of these issues. Many of us have been meeting the respective uh, people, appointees of Mr. President that are in charge of this, in charge of that, and uh, the National Assembly, uh, which constitutes 57 of us from the north, mm -hmm. uh, is, is, is quite a large number. Yeah. We've been meeting, resolutions have been passed, the leadership of the National Assembly have been meeting the presidency. Uh, if you watch the proceedings last Tuesday, uh, it was... Uh, uh, fire on the mountain. 
Yeah. The people, in fact, the, the Senate president spoke our mind when he said, look, we're advising Mr. President to take resolutions more seriously. Technically, resolutions of the National Assembly or any assembly is advisory. Mm -hmm. But advisory sometimes, uh, I can say, please give me your phone if I, uh, I'm your boss. I said, give me this form. Hmm. This, this it, it being courteous, so we have been advising. But when the things are now on ground and we discover that it is getting out of hand, right. you can't give any more excuses. Exactly. Yeah, have to let, let me go on a quick break. When we come hmm. back, we'll continue this conversation with our guests. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We still have with us Senator Malam Ibrahim Shekarao on the, on, the, on the show. Now, I'd like us to go into the matter of restructuring because many have called for yeah. restructuring. The, the, the government have told us that the reason why it's so difficult because there are different definitions of restructuring. What restructuring is to you in the north is different from what it is to the south. That there's no clear consensus on what restructuring should be. In your view, would you say that this season we had the hashtag answers, we have the issue of insecurity? Is the time for the government to begin to look in seriously into the matter of insecurity of restructuring? Did you? Well, I think uh, I quite agree that there are a number of indices that compels us to go back to the table and uh, discuss this uh, restructuring, as you said. And I also hold the view that there are as many interpretations of restructuring as the number of people pro uh, propagating it. Uh, to very many, it means the, uh, resource control, some uh, restructuring the, uh, the polity, the structure of government, and so on and so forth. Uh, I think I always argue that Nigeria had always been a product of restructuring. Right from our amalgamation over 100 years ago between the North and the Southern Protectorate, we passed through a number of restructuring, be it with the military or the civilian. Uh, we were on the parliamentary system, the military came, it was restructured right from uh, the Civil War. Uh, we were having the regions, regional governments, the military changed it to states. That was restructuring, states were increasing. There was a review of the uh, native authority governments to the local government review. And what, so we've been into restructuring, and I see nothing wrong okay. in still continuing to discuss. Uh, it's in our uh, move to find a solution to persisting problems. So I quite agree, and I think government should be the main driver of this restructuring ideas. Right. You see, uh, government has to coordinate it. Left to me, government should coordinate. In 2014, uh, the then government and uh, President uh, Jonathan, there was the national conference. The reports were there. Not too long, sometime last year or two years ago, the government of APC set up, or the party itself set up a committee to review, to come up with proposals. Uh, the restructuring, I think it's headed by the uh, governor of Kaduna State, a lot of proposals were made. We're here to see the report and the mm. outcome of that. Mm. So in a nutshell, what I'm saying is that I support the issue of restructuring. Uh, to me, restructuring right. meaning let's get together and talk okay. Okay. and see what, how do we move Nigeria forward. Right. You know, in ex okay, sorry, in explaining, you said this yeah. is a move that has to be spearheaded by the but federal go government. Yeah. For many yeah. of us, mm. we feel the, fe uh, um, the federal government is the executive and the legislature. Mm. So who is this federal government you're speaking of? Is it not the Senate and the legislature mm -hmm. having the conversation? And what do you think the general um, attitude is from the North? Because, you know, usually a lot of people feel we hear the South, but we don't really understand or hear the North. So I want to... No, 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 no. I, a lot of us have been talking. You see, when you say the South, the North, uh, of course, you'll, you'll agree with me that the South had the privilege of more on the media outfit. So you can okay. claim to have, yet, to have had the South more. But we're also talking. We've been propagating this. Uh, left to me, there is nothing wrong. But government missionaries have to bring in people. We've had this in the past. We've had so many constitutional conferences, uh, so many committees to review uh, constitution. We passed through all these things. That's why I said the main driver of the discussion of restructuring has to be government. You see that you bring in a number of different interest groups. Some do argue 
that uh, when you have a national assembly, why do you have to call people to do that? Right now, we are in the process of doing a lot of amendments into the Constitution. But these amendments are just uh, to make easy operations of the Constitution. Mm. But substantially, we are talking of restructuring. Some people are saying, look, let's go back to parliamentary mm. uh, system. <laughs> this system is too expensive mm -hmm. and right. so on. Let's uh, dissolve local mm. governments and retain only the state. Some are saying abolish the state, go back to local governments. Mm. Some are now even saying let's have the geopolitical zone. Most of what we do now are built on the geopolitical zone, the mm. six of them. But mm. it's not even in the constitution. So you find this is another restructuring. Let me let Nima throw in a question. Um, yeah. The APC, you know, being mm. the party in power, yeah. have been unable to put itself in order. Presently, they're in court, you know, they've not been able to have a national conference. Some people have alleged that there are sides within mm. the, the, the party. party. Some people are trying to hold on to power. Some mm. are calling for, you know, a proper sharing. Mm. You know, the Minister for Works and mm. Housing mm. recently said, you know, stick to your promise and mm. let there be, you know, a proper sharing. What's your mm. take? Well, I on think uh, uh, talking about the party, mm. I agree, it's, and it's nothing new when you have some scabbles in, within the party. There were crises in the leadership which led to the dissolution of the national uh, leadership, the National Working Committee. And the uh, caretaker committee is in place now. We're going to do the congresses at the state level that will culminate into the convention. All the parties are experiencing all of these things. So there's nothing new. And when you are heading into a convention, you know, interest will come. And you see, by the regulations of INEC, any registered party must have its national executive committee constituted with members of not less than two-thirds of Nigerian states. That's a minimum of 25 states. This is what compels most of the parties, or really all of them, to, to do the zoning of the positions. And that is where the intrigues will come in, yeah. uh, which zone takes chairman, which one takes secretary, which one takes this, which one takes that. And that, that is nothing new. We expect as the convention is coming, you will hear of this. And a is lot there, of people... Are they planning to not stick to that sharing formula? Is there an agreement to that initially? Well, these are things that possible? can be reviewed. Uh, somehow along your question, you built in uh, an issue that probably you didn't say properly, the issue of rotational leadership. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. You see, in APC, PDP has rotational constitutional provision. Uh, you rotate the presidency between the north and the south. It's there in the PDP. But in APC, it's not there. But whether it is there or not, I always argue that there is always the constitution of common sense, a sense of trying to carry everybody along, oh, right. the sense of giving everybody a sense of belonging. This does not mean you go for mediocrity. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, we go for the correct and the, the right candidates. There is no one single state in Nigeria today where you don't have hundreds of capable people that can be presidents of exactly. Nigeria. We have them. So we have a pool of responsible, capable people to choose from. So we need, we need not to kill ourselves in uh, uh, where it goes. The important thing, if the round table discussion in a given party decides, okay, it goes to A today, tomorrow it goes to B, the time goes to C, and so on. There's nothing wrong with that. If we agree on going to <coughs> A, we go to A and identify yeah. from the common pool, from the yeah. capable people, and we choose. I am for fairness in, in terms of leadership. Right. Most of us, we are trying to carry everybody along yeah. in spite of our diversity. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, there is going to be a build-up into wrong perception mm -hmm. that some people are not being considered. Let me come to the issue of um, Sharia, because yes. um, yeah. you brought Sharia into Kano State. And um, recently, a 13-year-old child was convicted and is about to be going to prison for life. Somebody else, I think, was um, sentenced to yeah, death. The musician. Uh, musician. Uh, in your view, especially with international outcry on against the Sharia, do you Tomorrow. think... Um, it's sustainable, Sharia, in, in the north, and you think it's time for us to begin to review? Well, I, I, I think there is, uh, from what you've said, there is a lot of ignorance on what Sharia is all about. You see, there is the penal code, 
consistent the issue of offenses and punishment. This is nothing new. It has been there right from uh, the time of uh, before independence. And uh, if you go into history of the way the Europeans came in, starting from the coastal area and so on and so on, the, the, in the, the indirect rule, before they came, because before the Western system of governance came in, we have the Islamic system of government. So all our laws and rules are largely uh, Islamic based. So the sh we, when you talk of uh, capital punishments, mm. offenses and punishment, this, this has been there for hundreds of years. So it's not that uh, my government brought Sharia also, it's there. It has been there, the offenses and so on. All we did, you see, uh, I always interpret the Sharia we brought in, in in terms of social justice being godly in every respect. It was nothing new. Uh, after all, how many people commit offenses that we were not going to the courts? All we are after is to make sure there is fairness, there is social justice in the system. But in 13 years old, if 13 years about to be sentenced, do you think well, that's... Well, this is... Uh, I, I'm not competent to speak about that because that mm. is a matter of the law okay. in the courts. And the Sharia laws, the Sharia courts, uh, are not final courts. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Sharia courts, we have Sharia appeal courts. Okay then they can go to the National Appeal Court up to Supreme Court. So it's, 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 okay. uh, it's nothing to worry, really. The, the system has taken care of the fairness to all. Right. Uh, so these are matters of uh, jurisprudence. Mm. The law books are there. The judgment are passed in accordance with the interpretation by the judge. Mm. And uh, if you're not satisfied with the judgment, there is no Sharia court that has a final mm. say. Okay. You move that a change. Right. We have appeal courts right. for the Sharia and so on and so forth. Okay. So I think his bar police in Kano was yeah. created for you know to enforce religious um, abuse and you know things that do not conform with the morals of the society. Yeah. And it's been largely effective. Why have the North not copied such an example when it comes to the general insecurity in the North, where you have bandits coming to people's houses now to kidnap them or do something like the Southwest proposed recently, the Amotekwa? Well, I think uh, it's one of our success story in Kano. Uh, I don't want to call it Hizba police, but it was community policing. Mm -hmm. uh, the name doesn't matter. You either call it Hizba, you call it Amotekun, you call it whatever. The important thing is we created community policing and for the, all the years we were there, up to today, Yisba is playing a very critical role. And unless you allow people to police themselves, all these uh, vices will mm. not go. Exactly. So allow people, what we did in the Hizba, we recruited 20 Hizba guards in every ward. Um, Kano has about 884 wards. We ended up with about 10,000 strengths of the Hizba. They are serving in their localities. You know, it's a ward is a small community. Mm -hmm. You know everybody there. So if you make it, we all we did was organize it. We promulgated the law to allow it to exist. In fact, uh, the current police leadership has to borrow from what we have done because it's a success story. Mm. Uh, and that's why we are now saying let every state have community policing. Mm. It's not the policing that will carry guns, will carry ammunition and so on, but allowing people to monitor themselves. Okay. And you don't have to carry one uh, motocone from uh, uh, local government A to local right. government B. The purpose is defeated. Right. So, I am for community policing, okay. and unless we do that, we will not get All over right. some of these right. issues. Okay, so, you know, when, when you talk about policy and um, all the plans that have been made legislatively, it shows that, you know, they ha a lot of thought is, give, uh, is given to it, and yeah. from people of great education, but the North is largely accused of being um, one of the high, has, has, highest number of um, illiteracy, illiteracy. Uh, out of school children. What is the definite mm -hmm. 
plan mm. for the north mm. concerning education? No, you see, uh, I think uh, you, the, 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 you have the problem of history of education. And most people believe that the north is educationally backward because of Islam, because of our rigidness not to go to school. The history of education, as I told you, it started from the coastal areas. The Europeans that came to Nigeria through the waters did not come to give us education, slave trading came. The first schools were meant to train church uh, interpreters and so on. That's how it started. Before the Europeans came up to the north, north had Islam for over 700 years, and there was a system of leadership. So they resisted, our forefathers resisted the missionaries because they were there for conversion. And that was what led to the indirect rule, and that was, the agreement was, that, okay, uh, we will not touch any of your religious aspects, your schooling, and so on. So it's not that the North didn't want to go to school, the challenges, population, and so on. Uh, we have the Quranic schools, the Islamia schools, in hundreds of thousands of them. Yeah. And uh, in virtually every community you find Islamia schools, Quranic schools, you have school proprietors there. All we're trying to do now is to see how we can uh, integrate the so-called Western system. There's nothing like Western education. Western system of education and the Islamic system of education trying to integrate the two. Mm. And when you come to integrate a system that has been there for 800 years with a system that is less than 100 years old, you can imagine how long the journey would be. Mm. So, that's so it's not that in the South there are better schools or better education and so on. Uh, no, we're talking about no, plans. We have schools, better but what we're, that, I'm coming to that. Mm. All I'm saying is that, for example, in my tenure in eight years, I established over 400 junior secondary schools. So a lot of this is being done. I and have to run, so unfortunately yeah. we run out of time, but there was an important yeah. question I had to ask you, but I want you to be very direct about it. Yeah. As an APC chieftain, yeah. is, is power coming back to the South in 2023? Well, you see, I would not want to speak for APC. I'm, of course, a senior member of APC. Uh, as I told you earlier on, in the APC constitution, there isn't a zoning aspect. But as I said, there is the common sense of fairness to all. So the question of which region, which zone should take the presidency is a collective decision of the party, as okay. a party. We'll take, your, we'll, take that, we'll take that response. Unfortunately, that's all we can take on the show. Thank, thank you, you very much, thank you very much. Thank for you. joining us. It's thank been you. an interesting day. Have a fabulous weekend. We'll see you Monday. Bye for now. Thank you.